The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 21, verses 28 to 32. What is your opinion? A man had two sons. He came to the first and said, Son, go out and work in the vineyard today. He said in reply, I will not. But afterwards, he changed his mind and went. The man came to the other son and gave the same order. He said in reply, yes, sir, but did not go. Which of the two did his father's will? They answered, the first. Jesus said to them, Amen, I said to you, tax collectors and prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God before you. When John came to you in the way of righteousness, you did not believe him, but tax collectors and prostitutes did. Yet even when you saw that, you did not later change your minds and believe them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, our God is a God of second chances. Even when we lose our first chance to respond to the invitation of the Lord to enter the kingdom of God, God is waiting, waiting for every one of us, waiting that we may repent and enter God's kingdom responding to his invitation. In the gospel today, the parable of the two sons. One son responded to the invitation of the father and said, I will go and work in the vineyard. But he did not go. The other son rejected. I will not go. And yet, he repented and went. In fact, both the sons offended the father by rejecting the father's call to enter the kingdom of God. But what is Jesus trying to tell us? We must always wait upon God because God is waiting upon us. God is waiting upon us because God knows the only way to accomplish our life is the way of obeying God's call, responding to God's invitation. God is always waiting for us. Jesus said the other parable. The other parable of two sons. Luke chapter 15, we call it the parable of the prodigal son. The son who was so prodigal so sinful. He went away from the father, grabbing all he thought was his right from the father. And he destroyed everything and finally ended up in the pigsty. The misery of human existence is the symbol of the pigsty. But 
From there, he responded to the call of the father. They came back to the father. And there was a celebration in the house. But the other son, the son who never went out of the father's house, always with the father, and yet he never understood the heartthrob of the father. He never understood what his father stood for. He never understood the mercy of the father. He rejected the father. He didn't want to come into the house. He didn't want to join the celebration of the father's mercy. What the Lord is telling us is, every one of us, we have a reason to repent. Because all of us have lost sight of the glory of God. As St. Paul tells us, Romans chapter 3, verses 23 onwards, all have sinned and are deprived of the glory of God. Even a righteous person shall know this. There's no righteousness, there's no human righteousness that is always responded to God's call. All have sinned and deprived of the glory of God. They are justified freely by His grace through the redemption in Christ Jesus. All of us need to be redeemed in Christ Jesus. In order to be redeemed in Christ Jesus, we need to turn to the Lord in repentance. Every time we come to God, we need to look into our hearts to understand how sinful we are. How sinful we are rejecting God's call. And this is our salvation. In fact, some years ago, a person came to see me during the retreat. He introduced himself to me. Then I realized he was a judge, a district judge. With a smile, he said to me, Father, I have a difference of opinion from what you spoke in the sermon today. I was speaking that day on the mercy of God. He said, Father, when a person commits a crime, he must pay for it. And therefore, he said, I'm always very just. Every criminal is to be punished. He has to pay for the offense he has committed. I told him, sir, I understand your position very well, but an authentic legal system always looks beyond the punishment. Why do you condemn a criminal to be punished, to cripple him mentally, to put his family to shame, to destroy him physically? To bring him to the end of his life? I said, I believe no. A legal system is meant to punish. To punish in order to reform. A legal system always looks beyond punishment. It prescribes punishment in order that the criminal may reform and come back to authentic citizenship, righteous citizenship of the country. My dear brothers and sisters, let us understand this. We have no right to condemn anyone. Jesus said, do not judge. 
It's a very powerful commandment. Do not judge. Because in every one of us, there is a tendency to find fault with others. When we find fault with others, something wrong in others, we condemn, we judge. We want to put that person to shame. But really, we do it to conceal the sins within us. In every one of us, there is sin. As St. Paul said, all of us have sinned. If all of us have sinned and lost the glory of God in our life, we need to come to God always repenting, acknowledging our sinfulness. That's why in every Holy Mass, before we begin the celebration, we confess. It is a reminder to all of us that we have sinned and lost the glory of God. In this parable today, Jesus is telling us that we cannot condemn anyone who lives in sin. Jesus said, the prostitutes and the tax collectors will enter the kingdom of God before you. In those days, prostitutes and tax collectors, well, they were the sinners. The society banned them and said, we need to keep away from them. They're sinful. But every sinner has a future. Every saint has a past. Every saint has a past who's not very saintly. Every sinner has a future, a future that is saintly. And that's what we must be respecting. That God is waiting, inviting every sinner to turn to him and find a righteousness in him. Our righteousness is not in us. In us there is sin. Our righteousness is what is granted by God when we turn to him. And the parable today is an invitation to turn to the Lord all the time. Repenting over our sin and finding our righteousness in him. Amen.